What's up boat lovers? Today we're working on a 34 foot 2002 Pursuit. We're going to be updating the engine control system. The vessel is equipped right now with a EEC 2001 which is the first generation of the electronic controls. This boat does have backup but we're going to be updating it to the new style which will have electric throttle, electric shift, backup but the backup on this now is going to be equipped with throttle. The customer never had that on the first generation, so he's going to experience this for this first time. So watch us do this. Okay guys, this boat is equipped with a two station. This is the backup station, which is a redundant head inside here, like I showed you in my other videos. And the second station is up in the tower, so this is all going to be cam bus. Right now, the this system now is analog, so it's a 5 volt reference signal that is operating this. But we're going to be updating it to a digital backbone on this, so it's going to be a NEMA, and he's going to have throttle now so when he goes into backup mode he'll have throttle and shift before he only had throttle backup and he had a limp home so it's almost the same as as the old one but the only thing that we're doing now is giving him throttle with backup so watch us do this we're going to take out the old system down there it's right there it's pretty much easy we have a nice little run here so the only obstacle now is running the CAN bus cable up to the tower. Okay, we're working with a set of Volvo engines on this. These are the old Volvo engines. But when we install the new system on here, okay, it's going to have to be programmed so that the Volvo can accept the throttle input. So this is the old processor. And you can see it has the Deutsch connection like uh, the new one does. That's the backup box right there. And we've done some work on this boat before, but he no longer has backup because we suspected that there was issues with this backup. So he's only running off of this, but now this is taking a toll and we're going to update it. Now, when we update from the old to the new, you could utilize some of the harnesses like the throttle and the shift, the power cable, and the start interlock and all of that. So some of it has to be repinned to the new Deutz connectors, but also like the throttle and shift, those remain the same and just plug into the main processor like normal. So like I showed you in my last one, everything goes out of the backup box and all the information comes from the main processor into the backup box and from the backup box it goes out to the transmission and the engines so this is the old analog harnesses and this is the two control heads on this side you have to open up this cover to get to this but majority of these Deutz connectors here remain the same the power remains the same but we need to pin it out. So we're gonna cut back, utilize the same power on both of them and get this new system installed. So right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start removing the control heads from the main helm, which is the same footprint. And the footprint on these two changed slightly, but all we have to do is just remount it in the same location here. So, okay, so I got the main processor off the wall. Now, I'm not, I don't know if this is going to be the location of the backup box or the, or that will be the location over there for the backup box. So, but this is the analog cables, like I was talking about. This is a 5 volt reference signal that goes to the control heads. We're no longer use, using this, so we have to run our own CAN bus. So, they're locked in here. I'm gonna do the best that I can to try to remove these harnesses, but most of the time they're buried inside here. And what we'll end up doing is we'll just tie these wires back and run our own harnesses. But I'll do the best that I can to eliminate 
any other spare wires that we need but this box is already loose now I take that box out since I've done it so many times I already know which plug is what but the wise thing for you to do is to just label and just say this is the throttle harness shift harness for port starboard enable circuit so we're going to get these two boxes out and then we're going to start working on the control heads up there now that I got the old system ripped out this is my processor here and my backup unit here the processor is somewhat almost in the same footprint it's a little bit bigger than the backup box and this is the backup box here this was reversed before um i didn't like both of them side by side from each other so i have a five foot harness that goes from here to here and all the information comes out of here so like i said a lot of this stuff this is my power and my start interlock this is this right here is my shift cable to my starboard side. Like I say, I know a lot of this stuff. This is my trolling cable to my port side. So, um, majority of the cables just plug directly right in. This is my actual throttle cable and that goes plugged directly right into here. So, the only thing that you need to change is the power interlock, power and start interlock. That's the one that you need to change. Uh, you need to run a separate uh, backup harness that gets plugged underneath here. That goes up to the main helm. And then the, pow uh, the backup switch here and the normal run switch. I believe this boat was a ignition enabled. So when you turn on the ignition, the engine controls came on. So I believe that what we're going to do on this particular boat is either keep it the same way or give him the option to turn the system off. So I'll go ahead and go ahead and run the inner link connector right now, which Nicholas right there has. So we're going to go ahead and connect that one in there and just run it here. The only thing that I need to do for this box here, which is a processor, is to supply power to it. That's it. This one here, I need to do a few connections, which is power, the start interlock, and the enable circuit. Otherwise, everything else is just plug and play. All right. Hey guys, so it's a little time lapse, but I have my inner link connector, which is this. That's the harness that goes from that box to this box here so the information that comes out of this box goes into our backup box and then our backup box is like i said if it's in backup it'll open up a set of relays or close a set of relays to work in backup but if not it'll normally be closed i believe and then it'll go back to the transmission and engine portion so you know this is the actual pass through of the system here if you have backup so we got all the harnesses connected. We rewired our power harness. Like I said, our shift harnesses remain the same and our throttle harness remain the same. The only thing that I had to repin from the old system was the backup enable, the start interlock, and the power. So I've already taken care of that. This is our bolt cable because it's only a short run between here and there. So I estimate somewhere like maybe seven feet eight ten feet so we're gonna run our own cable up there put two ends on there and then nicholas over here he has his harness where's the harness nick okay so this is the backup harness so this backup harness goes from this portion here into the bottom of that control head over there the one with the pink plug on it so that's the backup head so today we're gonna have the system operational with the main helm station there. So we just need to run two more harnesses. This one, that one, I put two field connectors on it and then we'll be able to power up the system. What do you think, Nate? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I'm yeah. just hungry. Just hungry? Yeah. Okay. Me? What are you doing? Nothing. Me? <laughs> just hanging around. Wait, while Nick is there looking cool and me sweating, these are my two comm cables. This is the analog signal 
which is a 5 volt reference and the other one is our is our device net that goes into a hole down there so I need to find it inside the engine room pull it and it's taped off so I got pull, I got two wires connected to it so I'm gonna get the other end once I get it through there then it's an easy run directly right to a processor so I've already got the cable somewhat ran but now I have to go to the engine room telling him where the cable is he'll never find it all right so I got the two wires into that chase down there that's gonna actually go into that location right over there and there's a little somewhat like a little cable port all the cables go from there directly right into the main helm so hopefully if i dropped it down inside that hole far enough i could probably see my end all i have to do is pull it from that portion there and then bring it back all the way to here which will be my analog and my digital signal will just come directly there i'll put an end here and an end there let's see how we do this okay guys we got the system already installed the back hatch opens up so it gives us more room so but now we're running the second station the second station runs all the way on the port side along this side over here through this access port and up the aft tower leg okay the issue that we're having is is that it goes through there's no actual easy pass through for this we have to loosen up the bottom cover so that we could get access to any of the wires there and then go through one of the legs so we're gonna work our way up from the top cut our old communication harness and pull it down here and then give us enough room to go up to the control head that in that direction and in that direction all right guys I'm all I'm up here underneath the platform for the tower so we've removed a couple screws here so that we could get this cover loose and we could actually see the glendening cable right here so what we're going to do is we're going to cut this black cable here i'm going to tie off this cable here to that black cable and we're going to pull it down and then whatever's left over here we're going to pull it from there going up so Nicholas is on the bottom. I'm going to make sure that I tie this thing up very good and I somehow lubricate this cable so it goes into that hole very easy. We got the cable taped up. I have some soap on the end of here. So now we're going to go through this hole here. We could use this pull cable here, but if we could eliminate and pull this thickness of wire out of this hole, it just makes it just easier for us to pass this cable through so we're gonna we cut this now we're gonna pull this cable back down so there's a little port that nicholas could pull from there so we're gonna pull that from down there okay go ahead and pull nick pull keep on pulling let me know when the cable's down there 10 years later You got it down there? Yeah. All right, guys. If you could eliminate some of the, the thickness going through these pipes here, that's the way to go. But if you have no other choice than to pull another cable through, just make sure that you lubricate the cable enough to go into the holes here. They really make these cable passages very tight down these legs. So we've already got this cable out. Now we're going to pull excessive amount to go to the processor and then we'll go ahead and measure this out and cut enough so that we could go directly to the control head so this was a nice little uh task for us uh, i'm glad we were able to achieve this otherwise um we would either try to go down through some other legs if we didn't have that ability to do this okay so we got our cables ran like i showed you but we have everything ran to the processor to the new control head up on the top and like i said this is our access port but it, 
like I always tell people, leave a little bit extra just in case you need to repair the end of the cable. At least you have something to pull back. So we put, put this inside the hole and then we didn't even have to utilize our pull string. So that's good. So now we'll go ahead and roll this thing up and cover it. We got the top mount control head, second station connected. And this is a pro grade head. So as you can see, we have our terminator here and we have our field service connector here. We've already did a nice clean install on this portion here. So this is ready to go. So now the only thing that we're gonna do right now is turn on the control system, verify that all the stations are working. Once everything is working, then we'll go ahead and program the throttle input for this particular application. All right, guys, we just double checked and triple checked all of our connections, making sure that everything is working fine. Well, everything is connected fine. We didn't have not turned on the power yet. So Nick, go ahead and turn on the control system. We're gonna verify that the system is working and it is working. So this is our number one station. So our backup is not on. When you first turn on the system, station one will come on and then you have to go to the second station and hit the take button two times in order for that to work. So now if we turn on the backup, which is here, so we're turning on the backup switch and as soon as we turn on the backup switch, system goes out and we're able to test and operate the vessel when the engine is running. So he'll have throttle and shift in backup mode. And when he turns the system off here, now the system comes back live and in warm mode. So we take the warm off, we shift it forward, neutral, reverse, neutral, reverse. I could actually hear the solenoid shift. So we're gonna go ahead and now program our processor to the Volvo EDC. There's a procedure on how to do that. You have to set the end limits, the idles and end limits. Otherwise, this system will go into an alarm and it won't work. So this is the way that this system is set up for Volvo and we have to go through the preliminary steps to make sure that the EDC system sees the information that the Glenn Denning system is putting out. All right, guys, we're pushed off and we're going to be doing some uh, little bay testing. So. This is a wrap for this pursuit. We tested both stations. This is the backup. We tested that. We tested the tower. And you actually seen us do a rigorous sea trial. So we put it through its test and we know that the system is working. So this customer is always going to have a good working system. And he has my number and I pick up to everybody that calls. Guys, if you have any questions, please let us know in the comment section below and like and subscribe. Thank you for following.